So I'm there. <laughs> I've got barbecue sauce on my fingers. I'm licking them. Hey, everybody! <laughs> Chris Scovier here with Seth Dan Fowler. Uh, we're here for Venture Friends, a talkback show about the uh, D&D podcast, Venture Forth D&D, available on all platforms as Venture Forth D&D. I am here with the master of the dungeon himself. Hi, Seth. <laughs> Hi, what's going on, bud? Oh, uh, you know, I'm just here talking with my friends who like to venture. I know, right? You yeah. gotta venture with you friends. You can't venture, venture with alone. Friends. When you're adventuring out in the world, yeah. it's good to have friends. It's great to have friends. <laughs> <laughs> it's good to have friends in general, but also yes. especially while adventuring. It's true. So, yeah, man. Well, good to be here. It is great to have you. Um, it has been a long time coming, and this is our third one. We've yeah. gotten a couple people in the in the in the can already. Mm -hmm. uh, now we're gonna talk to you. Yeah. Uh, for those of you who are watching, uh, we're gonna go right up until episode 141, so spoiler alert! Big spoiler alert. Yes. <laughs> if you are not cut up. Yes. Don't be mad at us. Don't at us when we spoil Please something for you. do not at me. Yeah. Uh, but how are you doing? I'm great, I'm yeah. great, yeah. Um, it has been, uh, yeah, I mean, it's it's been such a wild ride being a part of, of this wonderful, uh, Wonderful magical thing that we have. So, um, yeah, it's it's been awesome. And yeah. I'm just thrilled to be part of it. I'm surrounded by some awesome folks who, you know, are just super fun to to play with and to and to DM for. So, yeah. I've been having a great time. <laughs> I'm having a great time. I'm having a great time. And, our, and of course, our fans are amazing. Like I, you know, coming into this as as pretty much everybody watching probably well well knows, you know, is a obviously a very established show with so much content already ahead of it and then you know coming into it like i couldn't ask for a warmer welcome from from all the fans who've been yeah. here since day one so it's been i'm very grateful it's awesome and what and what a treat to have that moment where you did walk off as yeah. brother brim yeah and then take that moment behind the dm screen oh, oh my heart was hammering oh yeah oh yeah yeah i mean it felt like um you know, uh, I've I've been DMing for a long time, but to, to take something that's in kind of the public eye, right, that, that people obviously care about very deeply, mm -hmm. of course the cast and then also the fans, it just felt like a, a really big responsibility. Um, and I was like, oh man, this is not a, you know, Tuesday night game where I'm just like DMing with my pals. Yeah. Um, if, so it was a big, you know, um, it felt like stepping on stage, you know, like I've, I'm a performer, I have been for a long time, so like I felt that same, I don't want to, like it was that same kind of anticipation, yeah. like that giddiness of like, oh wow, I'm, I'm stepping into the light and, uh, and it was really cool and, um, and Ethan handled it the way like, you know, Ethan and I talked a lot and I think he handled it so beautifully and, and as far as handoffs go, I, I don't know if we could uh, ask for or done really any, any better than that, it, at least that's, it felt that way to me. So, mm -hmm. yeah, it was really special. It was really special. One of the things that was was watching live last night for episode 141, yeah. uh, and I was thinking, and I, I wrote this down, and it was, um, I don't have it in front of me because I had to change all my notes last second, but it's fine. Um, <laughs> this this story, and like all stories, like when, when you are swapping out the people that are telling the story, mm -hmm. it's essentially akin to, uh, and you're on a plane, mm -hmm. and the pilot opens up the cabin door, is like, someone want to take over? <laughs> That's kind yeah. of like, yeah, right? And like, then who's going to do this? Not only do you have to step in and continue to fly that plane, yeah. at the end of it, you have to land it. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh, yeah, that is, which we're still mid-flight, yeah, you know, I haven't you know? landed her yet, but yeah. uh, we'll we'll see how it all goes. <laughs> I, I think that, it, and shout out to Ethan, yeah. uh, that he gave you a flight plan and a, a passenger list and manifest that was yeah. so rich and and great that you you are, and I personally, as a fan, I will say this now, as the host of the show, are killing it. Oh, thank you. Yeah, it was very fun to watch, and the last couple episodes have been a testament to that, of just like, oh shit, holy shit, oh shit! And it's like <laughs> constant moments where it's just like, oh my god. But then allowing those moments to kind of breathe, and like, especially in this last episode, having these moments of quiet contemplation and reflection on the things that you have just done, mm -hmm. and then making those consequences matter. Yeah. Well, I think that's, I mean, thank you, first of yeah. all. That's like such wonderful praise. Um, and um, uh, I mean, of course, like, 
massive credit to Ethan for you know um, for setting me up for so much success, but also to the, to all the players, right? Like mm. they put so much heart and soul into the, the characters, which ultimately, like that, I think is almost more integral. Like we go, I had a, an acting coach say this once, and he was like talking about it in the context of the Avengers movies, and he was like, we don't go to watch the fight at the end. Like we we go to watch it, but like we know that's gonna happen. That's yeah. the plot. Like we all know what's coming, right? It's called Endgame. We go to watch the pride in Thor's eyes when Captain America picks up the hammer. Mm -hmm. We go to watch Captain America stand up because we've fallen in love with that character mm. and we know them and we wait for the I can do this all day. Like we fall in love with characters, not plot. And so so really this this show I think is so special um, be not because of anything that I've done, but because of the players and all the work and the enormous care that they've put into to making characters that I think our fans really love. So that that's really ultimately you know, it's more credit to them than anybody else. Um, but uh, it has been, and it has been challenging and wonderful and, uh, and so fulfilling to, to do. Yeah. I just want to say, uh, this is a talkback show. So if you have a question yeah. for Seth or the eventual cast member that will join us, throw it in the chat and we'll ask it. Yeah, please. Uh, I, I will kick to. us off with a question. Of course, well, hit me. Not oh, really geez. a question, more of an observation. Uh, in this last episode, we have a couple moments like this, mm -hmm. and a, again, a testament to you and your players, mm -hmm. where you really hit that zone, where the player, the dice, and the vibe are all in so concert with one another yeah. that it's just so cool. And one of those moments, and shout out to Rodney, I don't know if he's in the comments or not, but him pulling that like long rest potion out. Oh, dude. The, the thing on your face where you're like, oh, fuck. Yeah. <laughs> I could feel that. Like oh. that was like, I was just like, oh, it's so good. Yeah, it was, and it was funny because I like, you know, if you go back to the episode before, I just remember when he was like, I'm not taking it yet. And I was like, oh, okay. Like, why? I, yeah. I figured he was gonna like got, get in there and then, you know, slam it right before, but then he, he never took it. Yeah. And so pulling it out at the end, and of course, knowing Rodney using what I believe like fully his character knowledge, right? Yeah. Cause like they knew something was fucking going mm -hmm. down. And you know, Rodney thinking like, okay, how does Seeker plan? Right. What happens? It's like, okay, well, if I use Blueberry, I'm gonna pay for it. And mm -hmm. like all of that just was so cool in the way that he that he did it. And then of course, like I had forgotten about it cause I had a million and one things going through my brain, but then he's like, ah, like pulled it out. It was so fun and I loved it. I loved it. So, hey, um, hey, um, looks like, uh, looks like somebody's, oh, okay, never mind. Uh, oh, never mind. Ignore him. Yeah, ignore that guy. He doesn't exist. <laughs> You're not real. Uh, um, but yeah, so it was, uh, man, uh, and you got to love that, right? Like so much yeah. of D&D of &D is, is the, the, the sort of kind of Venn diagram of the dice, player decision and situation, right? right? And when those three things line up and you get to that sweet gooey center of, of awesomeness, um, it just feels so good, like it's when tough. everything works out that way. So it was, yeah. it was pretty cool. It was fucking great. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I do want to transition to some uh, some questions, yeah, uh, yeah. but I will first give you a comment because there's about 17 messages in oh, this, wow. uh, chat about it. Excellent. Uh, your hair is lovely. Oh, thank you. Uh, oh, well, should I? Oh, I'll let it down, I guess. Oh. We'll see what happens. <laughs> Wild magic it gets surge. It's so hot, though. <laughs> like when it's like this, it yeah. just gets so hot. I don't, so I, I keep it up most of the time, but. Wow. Uh, and now at this point, my wife won't let me cut it. So well, it's just, it's got to no. stay like this. But thank you all for the comment about hey, my hair. I appreciate it. I, I had to. It, it, was, it was getting a lot of love. <laughs> oh, thanks. Yes. Uh, and your sock game is on. Board. Oh, yes. So yeah. um, these these are fun socks, but also I got married in these socks. Oh. Yeah, these are my, these are my wedding socks. And I like to bring them out for stuff because they're fun. That's so nice. Yeah. yeah. My wife picked them. Just Did you exchange as like one of like a first look socks? Thing? Oh, <laughs> she gave me socks. Yeah. No, uh, no, we did not do a first. Did we do a first look? Shoot, I hope she's not watching. I should remember this. Um, no, uh, the first time I saw her was when she came down the aisle. So. Oh, was, cute. Oh, uh, yeah, I cried like a baby. No, that's oh. not a hard. I like. I don't. It's not hard for me to cry, but man, that one was. Oof, yeah. That one was a big one. Yeah. But anyway. Yeah. This is not about my wife, as hey. lovely as she is. <laughs> hey, you gotta you gotta throw it up to your wife. Absolutely. Uh, Absolutely. Well, our first question from our audience comes from Faye. In oh, our Faye! Hi, Faye. Uh, love you so many. You're the best. <laughs> our our wonderful moderator. Yeah. And they asked, 
If there were a video game oh, in the Venture oh, Forth yeah, setting, yeah. what would it look like, and what groups would it focus on, and what would the main plot be? Oh, jeez. Ice. Oh, man. Okay. If there were a video game set in the world of Venture Forth, I think that, like, there would be... You could... I think... I think you could play as like a faction, right? So you could play as like Order of the Red Wolf. I think that would be one of them and like go for the, you know, play Team Evil. Mm -hmm. um, I think that you could play as a, um, obviously you could play as, a, as an Iron, a member of the Iron Light Collective. Mm -hmm. um, you could play as, and then of course, like one of our principal characters, I think that would be really cool. Um, oh man, there's so many ways that that could go. Um, but I think that like, I think the most fun version of it would be to play as one of the characters mm. from the cast. Like that that would be my what I would want to do, right? And then like, you know, you can make different choices and things like that and see maybe like how how the choices that the characters make could like affect the world mm -hmm. in a different way. Cause kind of going back to what something you said earlier, which is like actions having consequences, that's why I fell in love with the was mm -hmm. because I could see like, oh wow, there were consequences that could not be undone. Right, you couldn't just like return to the safe point mm. when D&D &D is like, oh no, shit, like that happened. Now we gotta roll with it, which yeah. is often like so wonderful and sometimes bittersweet. And mm -hmm. it's just like, it's it's very lifelike, I think. And uh, uh, so that was really cool. And um, and I think that that would be a fun way to kind of explore the world is as kind of through the lens of one of the characters, but you're in the driver's seat. I think that would be neat. I think that would be cool too. Are we ready for our- Yeah, are we, are we, hey. are we ready? Welcome hey. to the show, Russ, everybody. Hey. Welcome. It's me. Sit down, pal. Hey, How you doing? Welcome back. Hungry. I like the platform. Hungry? Hungry. Always hungry. hungry. Yeah, hungry. Yeah, you are always hungry. <laughs> I think I made a comment like that one time that he's like, um, uh, uh, fuck, what's his name? Hungry? Uh, no, no. Yes, Brad Pitt in Ocean's Eleven. He's yeah, always, always eating. eating. <laughs> and very handsome, yes. of course. Oh, and very handsome, of course. I like the cut, Speaking man. Of handsome, thank good. you. Speaking of handsome. Hey. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> hey, welcome, welcome to the show, Russ. Yeah. How are you doing? Good, good. Uh, you smell uh, nice. Oh my you smell do smell really nice. nice. All the compliments. I, I love it. Yes, yes, yes. kind of but you, you were late. <laughs> Holy cow. Huh? But you were late. <laughs> How dare LA. you? <laughs> right? Hey, LA, everybody. It happens. Um, Yeah, so welcome to the show. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah this is exciting. Do Ooh. you like Dungeons and or Dragons? <sighs> What is that? <laughs> what the, what the, yeah. What the, <laughs> no, yeah. A little bit. A little bit. I'd say a little bit. You know, just a tiny bit. And like for the past maybe month, I've really been getting into it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> the past month. Amazing. Oh, jeez. <laughs> well, Russ, I'd like to walk into the show hey. uh, with a question. Oh, well, hey. uh, uh, From Gradle64 in the Discord. Oh, yeah. Awesome. Uh, Thank what, you, one of our patrons. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah, there you go. Hi. What's up, bud? What moment of this campaign has been most pivotal for Flint? Ooh. Wow. Um, there's definitely a lot of moments. Um, I think, and they we're all good with spoilers, right? Like, I guess. Oh, yeah. So we have, uh, I will okay. say again, if you have not watched up until episode 141, we are going to talk Ooh, about we're things going all, in that. Yeah, all the way up to all the right. most recent episode that aired. <laughs> sure. Uh, yeah, so I think the biggest one that comes to mind, I mean, there's been a lot of little moments here and there, but I think the biggest one is. Uh, um, a, a certain crystal that broke and a certain soul that mm -hmm. entered a certain Flynn Fellow Eve. Mm -hmm. And then I think even more on top of that, be because just the, the initial part of it was very fun because it, it was random. Mm -hmm. It was completely like a roll of the dice and it, the, the, the crystal body inhabitant or whatever ended up just choosing me. And, like, and then that just totally, instead of being like, oh, I don't want this, I was like, you know what? I'm going to run with it and see what happens. And then lo and behold, we find ourselves in the Underdark and we need help again. And uh, I think asking for help uh, was another big moment. That moment for asking for that that aid um, and whatever the hell came its way is mm -hmm. has changed Flynn's trajectory for a while. Because I think when I first started playing Flynn, it was you know the the bright eyed, bushy tailed, you know the innocent uh, child that's like I just want to be an adventurer and I just want to have fun mm -hmm. and and go out and see the world. Um, and that moment was kind of like oh things can happen that are not good and have a lot of uh, weight to the choices that are made and, and it was wild. So I think that's definitely something that has stayed with Flynn for a long time that is now part of him almost, even though he's reluctant to say it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, with the power struggle and everything and, and all that. It's coming from a random roll of the dice, which is another reason why I love d d It's just because like, yeah. Had that been planned, it wouldn't have been. You know, it was just like a ha it happened to break, it happened to roll on Flynn and then that kind of just led down a whole other path. Mm, yeah. Nice. 
Yeah. Was, uh, yeah, that that makes sense. That's the inciting incident, and yeah. then and then of course like the the subsequent yeah because it's the choices so long. and everything else. Like that's yeah, that's, that's yeah. Good. I, I wouldn't have thought that far back, but I guess that makes sense. <laughs> well, yeah. If I, if I want to start with the whole asking for help, I gotta yeah. you know who was I asking and why yeah. was I doing it is because of a random roll of the dice that made me like a low key warlock, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you're a fighter wizard. I'm a triple multi class, warlock? and it's wild. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm a I'm a fighter, a, a wizard, and a warlock. Okay. And the warlock was kind of the the random one that wasn't planned, but mm. I you know I love it. It's so cool, and we have some pretty cool stuff planned. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes. Well, who knows what the dice are going to do, but we right. have some cool yeah. stuff planned. Yeah. Uh, and it's all yeah, and it's, it's it's all because it's just something that happened in the campaign, and I think that's something else I did with Flynn is like I. I planned for him to kind of have like a start and like a little bit of backstory of like where he wanted to go, but I wanted his, I wanted his arc and his struggles and and, and the choices he made and, and the character he, he became to happen throughout the campaign, and for the audience to really see like him struggle and all that stuff. And I didn't want to have too much in the backstory. I just had, had like he went to this thing, he had, he had a family, and let's go. Yeah, you know. Because likes lemon pastries. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, Casting spells and kind of doing all your actions on Venture Forth. Uh, this is one of the things I, one of the many things that I like about Venture Forth. Um, you have three classes to worry about with that. Do you find it difficult to kind of like, okay, I'm casting a wizard spell. What do I have to do? Or does it kind of all blend of who Flynn is as a person? Right. Um, no. So we, uh, when I talked with Ethan originally with this, um, we kind of wanted the. Uh, the fighter eldritch knight magic and the war wizard magic to be basically the same thing mm -hmm. and then the, and the way we did that was uh it was still the tattoos but it was a different form of the tattoos that not everyone would always get it's like mm -hmm. that's why he has three tattoos he has the abjuration he has uh the evocation and those are the two staple eldritch knight spells that you can access from and the only time you can get more spells technically in the book is you have to you know access a certain other magical mm. school and so i was like okay well if i'm gonna go on the wizard let's just make it so the tattoos are just like all over the place and then it's different because he had a ritual where he got the transmutation uh circle so he has another sigil similar to how the elders knights get them mm -hmm. but then the rest of the schools of magic are like kind of tattooed up his fingers up his arm and wrapped around and that was like a different way of showing that like that's how he's accessing the rest of the magic. That's how he got his wizard um, backs. Because it also technically the, the tattoos wrap from the sigil now down to his fingers too. So it, like that's kind of how it was tweaked and changed, but still same same uh, way that Iron Light kind of access. Mm -hmm. I know that's super long winded, and I'm probably gonna want a bunch of tangents. So. <laughs> it's totally fine. That's what this show is. That's for. the point. That's Great. the point. Great. Yeah. Well, to put a period at the end of this ink sentence, <laughs> uh, we're gonna transition over to Seth over here. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Seth, also from Gradle 64, the Discord. Oh yeah. If you were making a character that mirrored your IRL self. How would you do it? Oh, wow. Um, so <laughs> so uh, I think I have at least one level in Barbarian um, because it's, uh, like I'm, I'm very nice, but I am also kind of a rage monster sometimes. Um, and uh, especially when you like threaten the things I care about, I, mm -hmm. I get very, I have like very, very intense uh, protective instinct. I, so I, I yeah. Um, so I think I'd have one level in Barbarian, but I think I, um, the other element is, um, I've been told this multiple times, um, is I am a, uh, a paladin mm -hmm. who uh, is not devoted to a deity, but to a set of principles. Yeah. Um, that, so like, instead of like drawing power from a god, um, that, that, yeah, I, I, so I'm, I'm a barbarian paladin, um, because I get real dumb when I get mad. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. so that, that's, that, that I think would be my IRL, um, my IRL class. Uh, I dig that. And, yeah. Paladin yeah. for sure. Barbarian I can, paladin. I, I definitely always thought of paladin. For yeah. Sure. <laughs> Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Um, which like, it's funny because I've never, I've never actually really played one. I've never played. Really? Yeah, I've never played a paladin. I've played like, you in played him like a seat. couple <laughs> times in like a one, you know, like a one shot, I think. Mm -hmm. Um, but I've never like sat down and really gotten into the character of, of, of one. Um, and I, I beca and I don't know why. I don't know yeah. Why. But anyway. That's wizard for me. I've always just like, I want to do this, but I've never done it. Oh, I, yeah. one of my favorite characters I ever played is a wizard. Actually, maybe my favorite nice. character is a Ooh. wizard. So. My, one, of, yeah, my, yeah. one of mine is up there too. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you should be able to answer this next question from Priya in the Discord. Hey, Priya, <laughs> hi. Hello. What is the most useful spell, least useful spell? And obviously we're going to discount Wish because not every campaign goes to 17 mm. level. 
just in general, not not on Flynn's side, like just, just in, in general in the whole game. You can, how about you will answer however you want? I kind of like. I'll do. I'll try and do both. It's gonna take a minute, but I think for Flynn, um, I think Shadowblade is his staple, mm -hmm. um, and it's just honestly the thing that's been kept keeping him going. Um, because I think with a short sword, it's just a D6. Yeah. And then that's it, yeah. right? And so I wanted to play Flynn as like a, basically he's no strength. <laughs> so he's he's a dex-based fighter. And kind of the way to make that work is you have to dive into the magic a little bit, um, unless you get like a rapier or something. So the Shadow Blade is his like big hitter. But I think Watering Wind is also, has been really helpful. Oh wow, yeah. Um, to save a certain cleric from uh, yeah. getting shot with poison arrows. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, sometimes, I mean, it doesn't yeah. always work, but, um, but I think overall the best spell, I don't know. I mean, we talked about this before with cantrips, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like prestidigitation and stuff mm -hmm. like that, like mage hand, that'd be cool. But all nine levels of spells. Do you have any thoughts? Uh, yeah. Um, the most useful spell, yeah. like in D and D. Um, oh man, that's a tough one. I but think teleportation has to be up there. I was gonna say, I mean, yeah. Misty Step, man. Yeah. That might be one of the. T that's like one of my top because it's like it's mm -hmm. so good. It's yeah. second level. Like it gets. It can get you out of a lot of nonsense. Um, Dimension and Door too. Dimension Door is awesome. Yeah. The least useful spell, True Strike. <laughs> Yeah, two strike. Two yeah. strike the cantrip. Yeah. Although, okay, wait. Yep. One time, one time in my D and D career, I saw someone use that to one of the most brutally effective things I've ever seen. They cast Armor of Agathis, or no, not True Strike, uh, Blade Ward. That I was, was gonna say Blade Ward. Yeah. They cast Blade <laughs> Ward and Armor of Agathis on themselves, and then ran through a line of like Drow soldiers. That was there. <laughs> It was because the resistance, it yeah. all stacks. So, and they so were good. warlocks, so they cast it like wow. fourth level. Dude, killed like 30 drow. Yep. Gee. It was, yeah, it was, it was amazing. It was super but that's cool. the only time I've ever seen it used. Wow. So, yeah, Blade Ward and True Strike are both pretty bad. Blade um, Ward is, that, uh, is actually a spell that I'm. Weird. The wish, the, I know, weird. The, wi the spell, weird. weird the ninth yeah. level spell, weird. I what don't. Is that? It's exactly. Uh, <laughs> it weird? makes you face your most internal fear, and then you take like forty ten psychic round per round. Yeah. Okay. It's just bad, yeah. and it's just yeah. poorly. I feel like they could have done so much more with that spell. Maybe. Yeah, it's one of those. that's like you're never gonna get it. So yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. So anyway, it's it's one of the ones where I'm like, this does not belong in ninth level. It should be like a fourth level. Yeah. It's ninth level. Yeah. yeah. It's ninth level, and it's yeah. real bad. Yeah. Yeah. If I, ooh, I popped off pretty hard there. If I may interject, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Master Harlequin asked a question Hi. a little ways back Hello. in the chat. Want to make sure we we pay that off? Thank you, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, do you guys have any tips for world building for an aspiring DM? I'm good oh. at building the world, <laughs> though I have trouble making good NPCs that aren't gods. Sad <laughs> question. I've always wondered how far ahead you guys are in the campaign than us fans. So. Oh, uh, that fluctuates. Yeah, fluctuates. that fluctuates. Um, I don't know. I mean, can I can I answer that question? The how far ahead? And no, I'm not going to answer that. Yeah, I'm going to answer the world building question. Um, yeah, that's a more fun one. World building. <laughs> wow, that is a huge topic that could. I mean, it literally spans novels and whole YouTube videos and all kinds of stuff. But um, tips for building NPCs. Um, I always like I just try to make sure there's at least one weird, interesting thing about them as best I can. Mm. Um, I and like and there's because there's just there's got to be something to grab onto for my brain to work and so and some NPCs like not every NPC has to be really that interesting you know what I mean like some people are, sometimes it's just the fucking guard or you know just the whatever uh, but but having um, uh, pulling from real, real world inspiration is one of my favorites in fact like it's it's something we endeavor not to do on the show because it, it does kind of break immersion is making any like you know meta like pop culture references like I don't we don't I don't like doing that because it, it again kind of takes me out of my immersion um, but uh, in my world building I will hello found it um, I will very often you know say like okay this person is Edna Mode from the Incredibles like mm -hmm. that is her or you know with this slight tweet um, because there's so many interesting people out there and sometimes they're people from my real life right I'm like this person would be a fun NPC to like ramp up this feature to 11 and dial this one down to 2 and mm -hmm. you got an interesting person um, so I would say like steal always find NPCs or things that you like in in the in your books in your movies in your whatever steal relentlessly I do it all the time definitely do that um, and then just like don't overcomplicate it um, you don't have to have a full backstory for every NPC. There's so much that you can make up on the fly. Pick one to three things about them that are interesting that, you know, that someone might grab onto. And then sometimes what can be really fun is to give them a secret. 
a tie to the campaign, a tie to a player, a tie to some weird bit of esoteric lore in your world. Like, oh, they secretly like, you guys have blown past so many people who had so many <laughs> secrets, but that's awesome because then I can, I can like reuse them later. You know, I can like I can I can incorporate them somehow. Um, but uh, and and that just helps you because ultimately you're just building out your DM deck mm. that you can then pull cards from later and throw out when you need to. So if I could go on top of that, because you yeah. you, th- you said something that actually made me remind it reminded me of something that I think you've done or you said that I think is a good world building, building tip is like um, if if they don't meet that NPC or if they don't find out that secret, mm. you can re- repurpose it yeah. later on down the campaign. The Absolutely. same thing with like a building, yep. uh, a store, um, any type of plot point that you wanted to have happen mm-hmm. um, because you don't want to railroad somebody into, and that's like a good way to like not railroad somebody. It's yeah. like, okay, they didn't they didn't find the the wand of uh, laughs, whatever. I'll just, yeah. maybe I'll put it down in this dungeon. Yeah, next, it'll next, be somewhere else. Next session, next Absolutely. month. Absolutely. You can always reuse the things that you didn't, your players didn't actually interact with. Um, and, um, uh, that is, I mean, yeah, that's a fantastic point. Is like, feel free to reuse whatever you need to, um, and n- also know that so much of what you create as a DM is not going to see the light of day. Um, but that's awesome because you're just you're just flexing that muscle and building that out. Mm. Um, and then the only other thing, oh man, there's some really awesome resources for world building. So like NPCs, that's what I would do, and then like places wise, again, steal relentlessly. And like one of the cool things that can be really fun to do about with like a place or a world is to just like, it's it comes down to me for the quality of my questions. Like if I'm asking good questions, like why is this place here? Like why here? What's around? Or like even start with like a simple premise. Like what if there was a town where everybody goes batshit insane at night when the moon pump comes out and then in the morning they have to like rebuild the place. And I'm like, that's cool. Like, just like, what if that was the whole premise for a town that the and that the PCs go through? Like at night, everybody loses it. There's some crazy curse on the place from a hag. I don't know, but like, just that question opens up a whole world of possibilities for you. So like, just ask yourself some questions. Like, what would it look like if halflings in this world were not like cute little farmers? What if they were like Spartan, badass military? like insanely territorial defensive. Like what would that look like in the context of a world? Mm. Um, And you can just come up with so many cool things by either playing against type or just asking yourself like one precipitating question. Anyway, I could go on about this for way too long. I could listen to you for hours. I love it, I love it. This is another question for Seth, but I want your opinion as a player at the table when this happened. Um, For Maricom, uh, Uh, the performance as Salix was so raw and compelling. It had us all enraptured in the layers of his reunion with Thess. How much do you consider his feelings about Thess's story before that confrontation? Is there a world where he could have understood them? Oh boy. Um, I spent, you know what's like, I mean, I have to give so much credit to Devin because Devin handed me just gold with Mm -hmm. their backstory um, and what they provided me for with Thess. And we had conversations about Salix and who who he was. um, And Devin was just so able to like so clearly paint a picture for me. And also I'm a younger brother. I have an older sister um, that I'm very close with and that I've had a very contentious relationship with at times. Um, and I believe that like the best performances that we all have, we bring a little bit of ourselves to. Um, so I think absolutely, like I know for a fact that like sibling love when you're close and not everybody has is that lucky, but when you are close with your siblings, there is that is a very special, very unique bond. Um, and you know, like uh, there's, gosh, there's so much meat there. And I think that's why it came out the way that it did, you know, is cause like it's, in, and then also some of my, closest friends that um, are, are military veterans um, and I've heard them speak to their experiences and the things that they've had. So there was just a lot of like real world stuff for me to pull in for Salix. Um, and man, uh, yeah, but they're also like to kind of answer the question is um, there's definitely a world where Salix completely understands like what happened to Thessaly and, and what went on. but often right when there are people that we love and care about a lot sometimes when they do stuff the like it's so hard to think of their perspective because all you can think of is why you know like how did they do that like um and i think for salix you know learning um and the funny part was i don't think i really decided up until the moment it happened when i like and again like 
that speaks to how well Devin wrote Salix and then of course the, the conversations we had. But when she said at the table that she had, that it was six years ago, I like I was like, oh, he's big mad. Mm -hmm. Like I, it just it immediately I was like, oh, I know him and I know how he feels about this. Mm -hmm. So and that was part of I think what made it what it was was I it was just so organic. Um, and you know, it was um, it was just the the classic, you know, like listen, right? Mm -hmm. Like listen to what it said, and then how do I feel about that? Um, and so yeah, that's that's kind of where a lot of that came from. But absolutely, and then I mean, like even later on, we, um, you know, there there was kind of a a, a a a bridge of that gap, right? Like and and there by no means I reconciled. I don't think fully. There's still so much there that he's mad about and. That, that they probably feel a certain way about. Um, but there's a start, right? There was the start of like, not anymore, right? Like like yeah. you said, like yeah. you you have something to live for. Whether you like, and it's uh, like, I'm not letting this happen again. Mm -hmm. um, so that is, um, yeah, that's, uh, anyway, I could, I, I could also <laughs> go on about that forever, but huge props to Devin because without without their writing and the conversations that we had, um, it, just, it just wouldn't have been what it was. Mm. Yeah. I remember you doing that math. Like, I don't know if it was you or, but I remember seeing when she said six years. Yeah. I remember you behind the behind the screen was were like, oh, yeah, oh, like shit. I did the oh. calculus like <laughs> oh, in real time. Happen. Yeah. Yeah, I remember that. I was yeah. like, oh, no. uh oh, he's not happy. Yeah. And I was just waiting for it. And, and oh, yeah, it was nuts. Because wow. I, and I remember saying I was like, someone was next to him. I think it was, maybe it was Thessaly or it was somebody else. And I was like, yeah, you. Mm. He did the math and was mm. like, wait, what the fuck? Like. Mm -hmm six years you've been just where where like yeah. anyway yeah. yeah it was wild i remember being around the table we were like <gasps> yeah, like was... held our breasts when it was like i thought you were dead it was like <laughs> it was yeah. so I, good I, I hit and props to by the way props to shane because i blew the shit out of that mic because i was loud yeah. like yeah. i was i mean i because i was kind of in it right yeah and um and so, like, the only reason it sounds good at all is because Shane's a real life fucking wizard. Yeah. Um, but uh, but I slammed my hand on the table like hard Whoa. Um, because I was like, I was again like kind of just occupying that headspace mm. for a little bit. Um, and yeah, it was it was intense. Like, I, I think a bunch of people at the table like actually it was good. jumped. Yeah. No, but it was good um, though. So, but it was it was it was a very authentic experience, which was cool. And then of course we had our post game like Devin and I. Were Hey, yeah. because, you well, we also talked about you know the potential of a confrontation. Mm. They, I don't think they had any idea what. Well, not until Salix showed up in Stillgate. Did that? Uh, did, did was Devin like what oh, kind of confrontation shit. was it? Yeah. 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 So. Oof. Yeah. Well, speaking from the people who watched it at home, it was really intense. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's. I mean, and obviously, it, it's it's performed really well on social yeah. media because I think it just. I mean, you know, uh, not it's and it wasn't. I feel like this is gonna say, like I mean you know good a good performance like and again that's yeah. all yeah. credit to Devin and, and what they what they gave me and, and mm -hmm. what what she brought to the interaction as well because none of that happens in a vacuum you need a good scene partner right. to make a good yeah. scene so it was amazing so and speaking of good scene partners hey Russ hey it's me <laughs> Flinny <Flinatic, laughs> Boy I've got a question for you yeah, yeah, yeah. from Jody in the Discord hello hi Jody She's hello <laughs> <laughs> do you think Flynn will show the contract to the rest of the party what is this. What is this animation? I oh. am trying so hard to turn it off. Uh, Somebody in the chat knows how. Let me go. Yeah, you gotta go up to the the FaceTime camera settings and turn off like screen reactions oh, or something. Funny. Like that. I have had this. I've happen. been looking for it for the last ten Wait. minutes. Oh no! <laughs> what no, you, what's the, uh... It was just fireworks. Yeah, it's just fireworks. It's like every time you do this, two thumbs up. Yeah, it's two thumbs up, right? That's incredible. I'm sorry, I, now we're just That's fucking. That's funny. Out. Oh, it's I'm hilarious. sorry. No, no, it's, no, it's, it's amazing. Fucking hilarious. Yeah. Uh, that's that's amazing. Where, yeah, it's, where it's, is it's, it? It's sent in since Sonoma. If you go into your anyway, it's uh, <laughs> it's a camera setting for reactions. I can't think of it right now. I've got a job to do. Yeah, it's it's a Mac thing. What we'll, we'll uh, figure it out for next time. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, for it's, now, enjoy the fireworks, it's one of everybody. The icons in the top right or something like that. Hey Russ. Oh yes, Russ. Uh, such, such a handsome man playing yeah. Flynn Favelweave. Flynn Flynn Boy. Flynn Flynn as, Boy. As our DM has now coined him. Flynn Boy. Oh, that's Boy. Right. I, forgot. I didn't even realize yeah. it. Flynn Boy. Yeah. <laughs> Do you think Flynn will show the contract oh, yeah. to the rest of the party? 
and how does he hope to break this contract? Oh boy, what a Never. what an easy answer I have for this long, dif- difficult road that Flynn has taken. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I have thoughts. Um, I don't know. So if we're going up to 141, mm-hmm. uh, there are there are some spoilers to this. So mute if whatever, but Jody. I don't know if you're caught up because Flynn has given the contract to uh, Kelly um, in a in a show of trust to just kind of like mend the bridges and, and the and the and the wounds healed but I think I think if he were to show it to anyone else it'd probably be best at least maybe Seeker because I feel like Seeker's uh, been most understanding when it comes to this uh, and then probably Thessaly and maybe Oma last because <laughs> he would, it would just make her so mad I think um, but I think eventually he wants to show it to everyone I think Kalik was the stepping stone uh, to kind of uh, lead into I, I think that's something that Flynn's getting more into or wants to is kind of mending things and trying to like ask Kellick for aid and help and, and kind of lean on him a little bit I think that's going to be something maybe that's coming up um, who knows but I think with the contract in general that was a very big step for, for Flynn to kind of just be like hey uh, you know because obviously they had to be butting heads with it the whole mm-hmm. time um, so yeah I think he wants to eventually show it to everyone else um, and then how to solve it um I don't think Flynn uh, wants it to be solved right now. I think he's he's enjoying the power. He's he didn't really have to do anything yet. I mean, like yeah. in, instead of just a miscommunication, you know. And and uh, honestly, what's really gonna happen? You know, I mean, if he just mess it up again, whatever. Oops. I think that's where he's at right now. <laughs> I love yeah. That. Um, <laughs> um, but but for me, yeah, I definitely want to find a way to, to break the contract. I think that's gonna be something that's gonna be very interesting. Um, and I think Flynn knows deep down that it's bad, mm-hmm. right? But he's. He's enjoying this newfound power right now, but I think mm. I have some ideas and thoughts, but um, that's gonna, you know, that's that's still up in the air. I mean, I don't really know if there's any set step plan, um, but it's gonna be interesting one way or another for sure. <laughs> interesting, it will be. Allow me to dig at this a little bit. Sure, more, do it. Yeah. Me. With a question for Marinicom, uh, Flynn has been dealing with a gray area of things, both of the be- uh, yep. benefit and detriment to those around him. Being such a wide-eyed kind of guy, how are the Agents of Repair members uh, affecting the relationship with the gray area surrounding Ooh. Flynn? I uh, mean, I think it's almost, it, it's difficult to unpack, and it's something that I'm kind of just like towing the edge of a little bit here and there, but I think the general idea of it is it's kind of like the... It's almost kind of like an angsty teenager kind of vibe a little bit where it's like I I feel like there's been a lot of disconnect with the party in the past and there's been healing but then now with the contract back up there's more disconnect and there was there it's it's, it's difficult so I think when he gets um uh, berated by a lot by a lot of people or when he gets like um disapproval or uh, doesn't want something to go somebody's way like he or or when he gets confused about like who are we killing and who aren't we killing because I think that's something that um, he struggled with a lot, um, trying to find the moral gray area, the moral, like, what's good, what's not good. Like, are we allowed to kill these people? Are we not allowed to kill these people? Because in the beginning, it was very like, oh my god, like, a guard just died, right? Like, holy crap. And we were all, like, bewildered. And I think everyone in the party kind of has accepted what is okay and what isn't okay. And I'm, I'm Flynn is, on the other hand, just kind of still confused with that. Because, again, he's this is his first time being an adventurer. Mm-hmm. So it's not something really he's had to deal with. I mean, kellick has been in the war, so he has a really gra- good grasp on that. Maybe Olma disassociates, I think, mm. a little bit. <laughs> and um, and I think Thessaly is also, and, and, and Seeker, they all have that um, experience with, mm-hmm. like, you know, Seeker being a, um, a thief kind of in that hollow guard, um, that whole, like, gray area guild, I guess. And uh, and Thessaly just, you know, she's done some things. <laughs> They've done some things. Um, so, yeah, with Flynn, it's, it's hard. And I think it's something that... Um, I don't really know where what's gonna happen unless people kind of just keep talking to him. I guess I don't know. I mean, he's he's struggling with it, and I think I think people in in his circle are starting to understand that he's struggling with it, mm-hmm. and I, I think they're gonna start switching. Like I think with Kellogg, I think that's a good start. I think mm-hmm. the contract has been a big opening for that, and I think whenever we have time, not trying to save the queen or a burning building or a city that's on fire. <laughs> Whenever we have time to sit and, ch- and chat, which we definitely have a chat on the way, mm-hmm. I think that's going to open up a lot of a lot of leads or threads to not salvation, but like a understanding of when to do what needs to be done. Yeah. I guess. Also, just like if I could interject, yeah, I, just, I remember it. when Flynn gave that was a good example. Another great example of a moment at the table where, like, 
we and I don't even I don't even correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't even know if Russ knew uh, that he was going to do that. Like it was mm. such an organic moment, mm. and we all lost our shit. <laughs> we, like I mean, if you watch the clip, we're all like, ah! like we yeah. lose it because it was such a. It felt like. Uh, such a reach across kind of the, the the divide of of you know how much contention there had been in in their relationship. So it was so fun. It was such a big step, um, and and like I am very excited to to see. And of course, like I keep throwing shit at them, and, mm-hmm. and so, because that's just like the world. The world moves, right? Like as a DM, it's. I have to shepherd the story, but also I have to be true to the fact that there are like events that are moving and that even I didn't set in place, but that were in motion, um, you know, that, that kind of have to happen. But anyway, when they do get a little quiet time or a little an, enough time to really dig into that, I'm, I'm very excited to see what happens, what comes in. And a shout out to you too, because you get to call other people out for their <laughs> actions. Like, Thessaly yeah. killed somebody yeah. that was surrendering. Yeah, Kellogg didn't. That a character, in my own opinion, should die. Mm, right. Well, yeah, like, I mean, like he's a terrible person. Yeah, like, he deserves like to be Fane, yeah. Fane, yeah. Lawson. But I mean, there's been moments where I think, yeah, it's just like Flynn's seen bad things happen, like people be killed that he doesn't understand why. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe it was, you know, and it's just like it, it's something that he's trying to wrap his head around. It's like, okay, well, you're yelling at me for doing something bad, but I literally just saw you kill someone. Mm-hmm. That was just. A guard, or that was there. Like, so I'm confused why I need to listen to you or care about what you're thinking because we're all doing bad shit mm-hmm. or bad stuff. You know, it's like, and I think that's something that he's trying to come to grips with is, um, where's the line? You know, right. and that's fun to play because it's like, yeah, I get to call people out on stuff, and you know, that's why we have our little back and forth. So it's been fun. Yeah. You know, you can make all the plans in the world, you can be a part of the Iron Light Collective, but sometimes a little 12 year old girl walks into your life yeah. and completely just throws a wrench in. Right? Yeah. <laughs> doesn't, doesn't that happen? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it happens to the best of us. It yeah. happens to the best of us. Yeah. Uh, this is a question from both of you. Uh, there are some questions I'm going to get to, Ooh. but this is a good kind of uh, transition point, I think. Um, I believe Thessaly said this in, in, in the episode, um, but they made it personal. Mm. I want to throw this to both of you because this is something that I thought of and it was an interesting thought experiment. I, I want to hear your opinions. They may have made it personal, but the agents of repair made it political. Because essentially what you've done is defended a king of Addersfeld and declared war on, on Keldor. Mm-hmm. That's what you've done right, right. now. Like right. defending right. a person is a declaration of war mm. because they are the ruler. Right. Um, oh boy. That is, and actually, um, that is, that has been really fascinating. Um, I don't want to see the agents and their reactions to that. And some of the, because I think there was like a certain amount of hesitancy sometimes about like, what are we doing mm-hmm. by committing to defending the, uh, you know, the Queen of Ondale from these, these military people from Kaldur. Um, and, and I think it is a very interesting inflection point in the campaign. And one thing I, I wanted to do as a DM to kind of continue to steer the story was, you know, for the longest time, the war uh, and the, the Ascension War now, as I've been taking, well, it depends on who you ask, right? The War of Usurpation mm. or the Ascension War, yep. depending. Um, the, uh, depending on which, uh, if you're Caldurian, Andalian, and Baldurian. Um, but it's, it's been this kind of backdrop to everything that has happened in the campaign so far, but the agents have really not gotten involved in it, except for per- very peripherally. Um, and for me, we were talking about landing a plane earlier. In order for the plane to land, I think that needs to resolve. Right. Um, so, you know, it kind of forces them in a way, um, and I, I wasn't trying to for- force them to make a particular decision, but make a decision. Because yeah. it's like at some point you can't, keep playing all the sides and you're not going to change it by being on the sidelines you got to get in there and that might mean dealing with some gray areas it might mean compromising a little bit on a a morality that you thought you might have had Mm -hmm. um and i think salix spoke to it he's like nobody's hands are clean in this nobody's like there's not one fucking person um and i think that that's really interesting and i think that's kind of analogous and true in, in real life right it's like War is war is a nasty business, man, yeah. and and no one's hands are really clean, um, and there's a million and one factors that go into it. But um, but yeah, now there are and and we've got you know without spoiling, we do have some exciting things coming up, and and I think we're gonna mm-hmm. see um, kind of the 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 
next iteration of, of what that decision ultimately is. is I'm very to. excited. Um, so yeah, we'll, 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 you'll, you'll find out. Stay tuned. Yeah, stay tuned. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, sorry, I, I, no, you're good. I went on for a while. Don't, don't apologize. You're doing great. I know. I'm what's as a right as a DM. I'm like, oh, I can't talk because I have to like do what I need yeah. to do and then let them let everybody else nice. yeah. do it. I remember um, when we used to after our sessions back when we were just playing with a bunch of bunch of friends. It was, yeah. Dude, we would talk for like hours oh, yeah. after the session and be like, oh shit, it's 2 yeah. a.m. Yeah, right? We gotta stop talking about these random builds that are, yeah. we don't even have. Yeah, right? Or, or the characters that we don't even like, have no, named. Oh, or yeah. yeah no, that well, was always fun. It's so much like there's, that's, I mean, or this is an example of it, right? Like, mm-hmm. Part of the fun of D&D is like talking about the what ifs yeah. and the what are's yeah. and everything else and all the consequences of the actions. Oh, what would happen if we would have done this instead? Yeah. Um, and that's the beauty of it is you really don't, much like life, right? Like decisions get made, mm-hmm. consequences have actions, cause has effect. And you know we go from there, um, and and that's really fun. Heck yeah, really fun. You can't go back to the checkpoint. No, no. I kind of like that that oh, weight dude. of the game. Yeah, and that's you know the infinite possibilities and the the um, no checkpoints. Yeah, there's a there's a cooler way to say that that yeah. I just don't have the. <laughs> You're good, but and I think that's why it invites so much commentary, right? Like mm-hmm. from people at large, like ah oh, damn, they should have done this, they should have done that. And people get so impassioned about it, which is wonderful. Um, but I think that's I think that's why it's it appeals to everybody so much is because there are no do overs, right? Like there's mm-hmm. no you can't yeah it's just the chips fall where they fall and yeah. you got to keep hammering. So. And because you could do that or you could do that thing differently because the game is so open. Yeah, I mean, that's what got me into it because I was a big video game guy and um, I found out that oh I can play this game and not fight the bad guy or mm-hmm. do this differently or do this differently. And that's, yeah, Jesus. <laughs> yeah. Opening up those options has really been really fun. Yeah. Being able to play it in a way like this was amazing mm-hmm. amazing people <laughs> and entertainers mm-hmm. we have a question from the twitch chat oh hey twitch chat. what's uh, up fam are you doing thumb, uh, fireworks still oh shoot yeah. <laughs> please don't sorry right. kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Shane's like no <laughs> uh, question for Seth and yeah. my extension you because it's about you too yeah uh, with the cryptic messages Flynn and Thessaly received during the big boss fight will be, <laughs> there be more revealed about the meaning of this and what do you think the rest of the party will be affected by this um you know what? All I'm going to say for that is watch next week's episode. Yeah. <laughs> watch next week's um. episode. And you may find some answers to those questions. Well, thank you, JCP4819. Yes. For that question. Thank you so much. Make yeah. sure to tune in next week because I think that you will find uh, you will find some answers to those questions. Huh? That's Joy. Joy. Oh, Hi, Joy. Sorry. Thank you. Jody. 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 <laughs> sorry, Jody. Hey, Jody, in, in practice for messing up your name, I'm going to go back to a question you asked before in the Discord for Seth. How did it feel coming to the table as Brother Brim and then being a new DM? And will we be seeing Brim again? Oh. And then wow. are you going to walk to the table and back as you're talking <laughs> yeah. to yourself? I'm, gonna run, I'm actually going to run back and forth. I'll just be an empty seat and I'll yeah. move back and forth. Um, so, oh man, it was amazing. Uh, <laughs> um, you know, it's funny. So Russ is actually the reason that I am, you know, was introduced to, to Venture Force. Uh, oh. Russ and I, Russ and I met. Oh boy, long time, a long time ago now, uh, at our friendly neighborhood comic book store, yeah. um, playing together yeah. in Adventures yeah. League, yeah. and then that led to yeah. uh, that led to playing together at the same table, and then that led to a home game that we were in together, and then uh, for quite a long time, and then that led to to this. Um, and Russ had approached me about, you know, about uh, in a, an involvement in Venture Forth um, once before. Yeah. I, I don't know if I can, t- I don't know what I can no, talk I mean, about, no, but I can't, yeah, but anyway. I think it was a character um, or something. Yeah. And like this, the timing didn't line up. Yeah, so timing like, didn't line up. And so we reached I, I back out to say, me. It was, I think it was for My City of Ruins. Yeah, yeah that's, that's right. right. Yeah, it, was for, it was for My City to of Ruins. To play on My City of Ruins, I remember uh, To play, and I just, I scheduling couldn't make it work at that, that time. Um, and then he reached out to me again, and I was like, oh, yeah, sure, I'd love to like. And, and then, of course, it was like, oh, no, <laughs> we want you to be the team. We want everything. And I was like, what? <laughs> um, and then, of course, like Shane and Rebecca, and like, and then eventually the whole cast and everything. Mm-hmm. Um, so it was, it was wonderful. And then, of course, like knowing that I was going to be the DM and that I was going to be taking over for Ethan, um, the goal with Brother Brim was how can I create a, a PC that is very compelling to me to play, but is also just going to like ultimately serve the story because mm-hmm. he's not there for the long haul. He's there to, you know, to to move the story forward, to have connections that are meaningful with the existing High Munch, High Munch. Um, with the existing PCs, and then you know, and then ultimately 
you know, uh, take his place in the background, so to speak. Mm -hmm. um, but there is, and he, he showed up in so many ways that I didn't expect him to. The relationship with Seeker was not really expected or anticipated. Yep. Oh, much. Sorry. <laughs> We're just losing it. Come here, baby. It's okay. Um, Big fan of <laughs> um, But, um, so there was so much of that character. Um, and I wanted, uh, you know, we were at a point in the story where Olma's backstory was very important. And so, you know, Ethan and I had a lot of discussion about, okay, like how can I make something that serves, you know, serves the story? And, and that's kind of what we arrived at. Mm -hmm. and, um, so Brim was ultimately kind of there as a catalyst to, to move the story forward. But of course, I absolutely fell in love with him. Mm -hmm. um, so and, did someone and, else. Yeah, yeah, hey. they did. Um, which again, totally <laughs> one of the wonderful things about D&D, &D, like never yeah. planned for that. Uh, never really even made a decision as to Brim's, uh, you know, um, orientation or preferences. And, and it was something that emerged so organically and it was mm. so wonderful. Um, but uh, I, I think he will definitely make a return. Um, I'm always hesitant with DMPCs, especially ones that I care about deeply, because mm. then they become your darlings, and sometimes people have a hard time, uh, you know, um, doing certain things. Like I, I, I even was hesitant to play him for the length that I did as the DM, oh, wow. um, but just because you know, it's it's hard. It can be difficult to, to separate and not, mm -hmm. you know, uh, take over because you have the DM knowledge and mm -hmm. not just the player knowledge. So anyway, um, but he will most assuredly make a return at some point, <laughs> if nothing else other than to serve my own vanity. Uh, <laughs> he will be back. I mean, um, he's, got sure. a, he's got a race to win again. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, kick his ass. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, that was the best. I did uh, not, honestly, going into that fight or that uh, encounter or whatever you would call it, that puzzle, yeah. like I skill did not challenge. expect. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, skill challenge. Yeah. I did not expect Flynn to win that at all. Oh, like, at all. Like, I the, was like, oh, it'll be fun. The oh, guys yeah. spoke, man. Yeah, the guys spoke like yes. little, uh, all the all the little things yeah. that got thrown in there, yeah. and you rolled. And it great. became such a cool moment. Oh yeah, it was you know? awesome. Yeah. It was awesome. Such a cool moment that Flynn misread. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, Thanks, patron. Hey, well, hey, speaking about your patron and misreading, <laughs> yeah. another no question. It. It's just a Lord of Shade. It's, it's it is. You think so? <laughs> it's just a person, of nobility, really. Oh, okay. Well, Priya has a question that oh, you can dig more, Priya, Priya, more into. Do you think uh, Flynn's patron is actually Vastra Nath, aka the Red Wolf, aka Ooh. the Outcast? Does <laughs> Flynn think so? I what think about everybody else. Yeah, that's something that I thought of for a minute. Um, and I think Flynn is still unsure. I mean, he's got the contract and he's read it, so he knows it's the name and the title and all that stuff. He doesn't know too much about the gods, so that kind of stuff is pseudo mystery to him a little bit like he's not really sure he knows that like they're new gods there's old gods and like there's some angels and stuff but he gets distracted and wants to fight things and uh so i think that he has a good a good grasp on what it is or the name but i mean he doesn't know what the hell's going on magic mm. is weird magic <laughs> is weird <Yeah. laughs> they do be that way that was definitely something i thought at the beginning though like oh what if it is boss or not or what if it is like the big like him that's yeah. I mean, it could be. I mean, yeah. it, it, it also could be, you know, another lich that we haven't met yet. Yeah. <laughs> there's been uh yeah. There's been some some little bits of lore uh, that have been seeded that if if you're paying real close attention might give some additional clues. Um, but uh, God damn you know. it. <laughs> Time to rewatch the episode. Yeah. <laughs> I already have too much to do, Sam. <laughs> do you see my notes yeah, right here? I love it. That's more than I take this episode. scribblings. I, I literally, it. I literally have like, as I am listening to the episode, I have a book of questions that I write down, Amazing. and I will pause the episode and go, like, okay, here we go, here we go. Awesome. Oh my gosh. But speaking of questions, yes. we got another banger. Hey. Our banger. Oh shit. Another rest question. What are your thoughts about the recent? Iron Light Shade Flynn heard about at the bar. Is that affecting how the current Addersfeld situation is running out? Um, ooh. I think Flynn's got too much on his mind right now, but it's something that he's, there, there's there's some time that he, wa he, he wants to ask more about it, but he doesn't have the time to right now. He's, mm. He knows some people in some certain places that he wants to ask, and I think now that he's back in Addersfeld, you know, if, if things are, you know, or, Sorry, I don't want to go too far ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. now you're going to Hattersfeld, and we're going to go there. <laughs> Definitely aren't there yet. <laughs> uh, there's, Yeah, there's going to be people that are just going to want to ask. But I mean, there's yeah. a problem that needs to be solved first. And I think once that's resolved, th then maybe he can ask people that are there. Because mm. it is disconcerting, and it is something that he wants to find out more about. Um, 
Only he would have paid attention in class, you know. <laughs> yeah, just, yeah, Flynn got a little distracted during little distracted. Iron Light history yeah. class. Yeah. It is, I, I said this in the video last night. It is so crazy that that like Keldor essentially attacked this village and is like, oh, accidentally a secret thing of all these magical fighters that are just gonna wreck your shit. Yeah, yeah. Which was crazy to me. Yeah. And they are, forgive me for not remembering 100 percent of the lore right now. They are the holdout in that city. That's They're what's been one, said. Yeah. yeah. The, what we know, what what we know up to what is uh, what has been published mm -hmm. is that. Um, Yes, the Iron Light Collective castle in Adversfeld mm -hmm. is one of a few points that are like strongholds within the city that are holding out against the on the Caldurian uh, advance. Cool. Um, and yeah, I mean, it is. Uh, I mean, also like uh, it's you know the Iron Light has been uh, you know obviously a, a thread um, throughout the campaign um, and obviously have a bit of a dubious history maybe mm. of some kind um so really wanted to explore you know uh, a version of of that story where it's like okay well, well again i kind of ask myself these questions like what if this happens and then it's like i don't know but it sounds cool as a premise and we'll figure out what happens you know then then they touch it right all the players and it's like mm -hmm. turns into something i could have never anticipated um so yeah they are one of a few points that are holding out we will see what that <laughs> entails I don't know what that all means, but yeah, I mean, imagine being like a normal ass Caldurian soldier and walking up and then there's like a castle full of Elder yeah. Strikes yeah. just ready to kick your ass. Yeah. Like, it's it's cool. It's cool. Oh, man, now I'm just thinking about yeah. that. Oh, yeah. It's cool. It's really, really cool. <laughs> the Iron Knight, join the Iron Light. Yeah. yeah. Join the Iron Light. Join the Iron Light. It's going through a regime, regime change, you know? <laughs> it's going through some problems, but, you know, I think once it's all cleaned up, I think it's going to be a really welcoming place. <laughs> and, and, and this is the wonderful thing about about this show and Munch. Given and Munch. <laughs> Munch wants to join too. Yeah. Munch is the Iron Light Collective. Yeah. Uh, it's just a cat. <laughs> it's just a cat. Uh, the real mastermind. <laughs> Munch. Uh, the monster we could never defeat. Yeah. It's true. CR 30 monster. <laughs> um, when, when Jesus. <laughs> when warring factions become friends, there's enemies at the gates. I think is a very uh, either a quote I just made up or I read somewhere. Um, oh, when warring, yeah. So it, yeah, when warring factions mm -hmm. become friends, there's enemies at the gates. Yes. If enemy of my enemy is my friend. Yes. Mm -hmm. Uh, it is interesting to think that, like, because you have, like, there there were some, like, shady business at the Iron Light. Mm -hmm. Whether or not Flynn knew about it or not, it's still kind of up for debate. Right. Um, that, I'd be curious to see how this siege impacts that. And because, like, you have, yeah. forgive me for not remembering their name, but your antagonist that you... Uh, Zorkal. Zorkal. Mm -hmm. uh, they were told that they're there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they're there. Wild to me. That yeah, like, did we I think did we reach out in the last episode? We talked yeah. to him a little bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. in the in right. one forty one, Kellick sent because you guys found out that message, they were there, right? And Kellick sent to Zorkal, and he is like mid shit right now. Yeah, yeah. yeah so he's having a good old time. <laughs> yeah, I love that yeah. so much. Oh yeah. Uh, and speaking of more things that we loved, a second question from Maricom. Hey! The Fatal Reserve with an E, as we found out yes. recently. The Fatali Reserve. <laughs> the Fatali <laughs> Reserve. <laughs> the Reserve Fatali. The Femme Fatale yeah. Reserve. <laughs> Had such a dynamic push and pull, a DM's dream combat mechanic, uh. and major props for pulling that off while keeping the stakes so high. Is there any Fatal Reserve member that didn't get to pull a killer move that you wish could have. Ooh. Perhaps they didn't have time to. Mm. Perhaps we'll find out soon enough. Um, so, uh, there, you know, Vossen had some particularly nasty stuff that he could do. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, the dice uh, weren't going his way and there were a couple of additional abilities and things like that that he never got the chance to, to debut. Um, because, I mean, uh, she, you know, Rebecca completely turned that combat encounter upside down, which was awesome. Um, <laughs> yeah. But, um, which like, I mean, we just posted a clip about it. I was like, oh Jesus, like I have to totally rearrange yeah. the way I think about this. And it was it was fascinating. Um, and it was again, just such a cool example of like, um, I think I, I 
commented this on one of our one of our TikTok videos, but I was like, yeah, they, like I have been, it is challenging in the best possible way, right? And like having me think on my feet and adapt to changing circumstances while still trying to keep everything, like the story involved and the stakes high. Um, and uh, and I have to give credit again to Devin. Um, ultimately, the, the Fatal Reserve is not my creation, that's Devin. Um, I filled in some things and, you know, developed like, but she just gave me these paragraphs where Devin's such an incredible writer that she was able to give me these paragraphs that I immediately could just go, boom, okay, like I, I'm in this person's bones already. Um, like Fane, the whole interaction with him at the end and his like embrace of his end was yeah. a relief. And Devin gave me the seeds for that. And then, you know, afterwards she had this talk and she was like, oh my God, they were all like perfect. And yeah. I was like, that's you, like <laughs> I didn't, you know? So it was just, um, it was, yes, there were some things that they didn't get to debut. Svara and Hadrix are in the wind. Um, so who knows yeah. where they will come back, if they will come back, maybe that'll, maybe they're a campaign two problem. I really don't know. Um, <laughs> But um, there were some things that they never got to do that I wish they could have, but I also fucking loved everything about mm -hmm. how that turned out. Um, and uh, it was stressful, um, but awesome. Uh, really, really cool. So anyway, I, don't, I think that answered the question. I'm yeah. sorry. <laughs> I ramble. This is, and all the players can attest that this is how conversations with me go. I mean, we're gonna talk about this one thing and then it's like an hour and a half later of Seth rambling. But that's so. a good, it, it is a good thing. I and mean, it's a testament. Good quality for a DM. It's a good quality. And, it, and it's a testament to you and your players who at any moment in this combat could throw something your way, whether it's story or combat or whatever have you, and you're able to roll with it and they're able to bounce off of it. And I think that's one of the great things about Venture Forth of like, everyone at the table is like that. Yeah. Like there there could be a moment from Thessaly that is like a banger moment for emotional reasons. Uh, Shane could whip out some massive healing spell. Rebecca could just do anything that she does. <laughs> Chaos monster. I, I have, Chaos I have monster. played or DM'd with every person in Venture Forth, mm -hmm. and Rebecca has befuddled me more than anyone. Yeah. And it is frustrating, <laughs> so good luck. <laughs> Thank you. Um, uh... <laughs> The best part about this is that Ethan was like, Rebecca's going to challenge you yeah, the most. Yeah, he yeah, even yeah. said it, which was beautiful. And he yeah. was like, it's the best, but she's going to keep you on your yeah. toes. And I was like, all right, cool. Yeah. Cool, no, because I and I, I, I have been fortunate enough over my D&D career to play with incredible players. Yeah. Almost always. I've been like so lucky. There's, you know, uh, I've never had like the D&D horror story, which thank goodness. Um, but yeah, I mean, coming this table in particular, the, and I think it's a testament to one, the environment, ultimately like Russ, Shane and Rebecca are kind of the three OGs of mm -hmm. Venture Forth. And they have cultivated an environment and a, and a, and a, a, a mores, right? That is so conducive. Yes, mores, it's a real word. It's like a German thing for kind of like gestalt. Um, but- uh, <laughs> It's like a German thing for another German German thing. word, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> I realized that as it came out of my mouth, um, but, um, they've created such an incredible culture, uh, which is hard. Uh, it's really mm -hmm. hard to do. Anybody, uh, I think, can tell you that that's the hardest thing to change in any like organization uh, or in any group, ultimately, like group dynamic. And they've so carefully crafted that. Um, and I think it's what ultimately is kind of the secret sauce of Venture Forth is we have this environment where we all trust each other, where we can like, we know we can just like let go and fall and someone's gonna catch us. Um, and and yeah, uh, I, I have to you know give credit where credit is due. It's, it's yeah. undoubtedly um, that. And, and that's the only reason I think that we're able to have so much magic at our table. Thanks. It's because they, they laid such a good foundation. Love you, Sam. Love you. <laughs> <laughs> Because I'm not just saying that because they're here. <laughs> <laughs> they are all around us. <laughs> yeah, the big, the big hook comes in. <laughs> so in episode 40, 147. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, we, we are uh, sitting next to one of the original members of Venture yeah, Forth. That's uh, me. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I do want to ask just one, one behind the scenes question, just because we're dealing with a lot of like story stuff. I keep thumbsing up. I'm sorry about the fireworks if they're happening. <laughs> hey, it's great. No! <laughs> Uh, can you Sorry, share you. a memorable behind the scene moment or funny anecdote from recording an episode? And that could be from when you were on video all the way back to episode one. 
There's just a lot of little moments of just, just like pitter pattering. And I think some of that is now kind of like behind the scenes that we're recording. And it goes to Patreon, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so those are like the moments that I really like. They're just like us chatting before the session or, or afterwards. We just like mm -hmm. get into random topics. Like, I think we talked about what's that Bridgerton show? <laughs> Did not know that the was the Bridgerton what that was. show. Uh, I didn't know that was what that yeah. show was about. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but it was like some little moments like that. Um, Too risque for Patreon. Yeah. yeah. Conversation. Right. <laughs> yeah. Dang. Are that, we getting yeah. the TOS right now? Is that we're going to do? Um, yeah, wow. Anyway, uh, yeah, like little moments like that. I, I don't know if there's any one that stands out, but it's just like those little moments. I, I don't remember exactly what was said, but I remember how I felt, you know, mm -hmm. and it's just like with my friends hanging out, playing the game and just talking, catching up. And I think those are the moments that I just love. <laughs> it's just those little moments before the session, whether we're out here or in there, like yeah. getting ready. Um, it's it's just as important to me as the show. It's because mm -hmm. I'm hanging out with my friends. Yeah, you know, that's, yeah. that's what it is. Um, I would like to tag on because you've been here a long time, but um, one of my favorite like things that um, I stole this from another player, and it's one of my favorite things that we get to do now is Stars and Wishes, um, which we do at the end of every session. It's private. It's just for us as mm -hmm. a group. Um, so sorry. Um, but the it's basically this kind of mechanism um, by which at the end of every session you can sit down as a group and you can say like, okay, you can stars go to certain people um, and almost everybody gets stars because we're just always so hyped. <laughs> we're trying to limit it, but we just we're want trying to give to star. Yeah. Everybody's only supposed to give one, but that yeah. goes out of the fucking yeah. window as soon as we start talking. But it's just like, highlighting people in the game for doing something that was really true to character or really smart just like as a player or that had like a really great you know role play moment or whatever it is or even like you know uh somebody who did a good job of like housekeeping and making sure we were like on time and doing the shit we were supposed to do you know what i mean like adjusting to technical difficulties all of those things can all happen um, and so we give each other stars and props and, and give each other praise for the things that we do well. And then wishes is kind of a, it's like, I don't want to, it's not, we don't really ever criticize one another, but we say like more of that. I wish for more of that thing that happened, or I wish this would have happened, or this would have gone a little differently. And it's kind of a way for us to really keep an eye on the rudder of the ship and make sure that everything's moving in the direction we all want it to. Um, and to, you know, sing each other's praises and uh, where we can and to, to ask for what we need. Mm -hmm. um, when that is that comes up, um, so those are some of my favorite behind the scenes. It's 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 really fun to sit down with everybody afterwards. And be like, all right, you were awesome, <laughs> like, and that's really fun. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Well, allow me to give you both a star. Hey. hey. Say that you were wonderful guests. Thank you so much for coming out. Oh, yeah. And I'd like to give another star to Shane, yes. our producer behind the camera right there, God Mike himself. Yeah. Uh, and I'll give a wish to our audience. I was listening to the delayed audio, so. <laughs> I always just heard that. <laughs> always working. That guy is Man always working. Sleep. I gave it a wish to our audience to come back next time yeah. and keep watching Venture Forth. Bum 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 bum. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know. Right. It's, right. it's, right. it's, it's, it's like Pavlovian. Every time we hear it, it's like bum 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 bum. It's my favorite thing. All right. Well, from us to you. Goodbye. <laughs> Goodbye, nerds. Goodbye, nerds. Goodbye, nerds. Sorry, we just heard playback. That's of ourselves. the end. <laughs>